So um, now we know the location and the boundaries and contents of the submental triangle uh, which is coming almost here between the uh, two anterior belly of digastric muscle and lateral to the anterior belly of digastric between the anterior and posterior bellies of the digastric. So anterior belly and here comes the goes the posterior belly. So between this comes the submandibular triangle which is also a very important triangle in the uh, anterior compartment of neck otherwise called the digastric triangle. Okay. So second important is submandibular. Or digastric because it is situated between the anterior and the posterior belly of digastric, it is otherwise called digastric triangle. Okay, lateral uh, view of neck clearly seen the digastric triangle medially by the anterior belly of digastric, posteriorly, posterior belly of digastric, as well as. There is one more muscle there in the posterior along with the posterior belly of digastric that is what is this one? Styloid process. So from there to the hyoid bone comes a stylohyoid muscle. Okay. So stylohyoid muscle and the anterior posterior belly of digastric. Okay. So actually this uh, triangle, this one is the submandibular triangle. So, uh, bordered between mandible and the hyoid bone and the anterior belly of digastric uh, and also the posterior belly. And the anterior belly of digastric, the origin is from the digastric fossa on the inner surface or the in internal surface of the mandible and it comes downwards and forwards and joins with a common intermediate tendon. And again, the posterior belly originates from the uh, mastoid notch of the uh, temporal bone. Some books uh, say it as the digastric notch also. Anyway, it is from the uh, temporal bone and again it comes downwards and forwards and it attached to the body and some part of the uh, uh, greater horn of hyoid bone. Okay, mainly to the body with the intermediate tendon. And this intermediate tendon between the anterior and posterior belly, oh, there is an intermediate tendon, and that intermediate ten tendon uh, encircles the uh, tendon of stylohyoid muscle. Okay, so anterior belly of digastric from the digastric uh, notch on the internal surface of the mandible, and it is supplied by mylohyoid. Here come this is mylohyoid or already. I explained about the mylohyoid muscle along with submental triangle. So this is mylohyoid muscle and the mylohyoid muscle is supplied by nerve to mylohyoid which is a branch of inferior alveolar Now Again it is a branch of mandibular addiction of trigeminal. So the same nerve, mylohyoid nerve supplies the anterior belly of digastric also and the posterior belly is supplied by facial nerve. Okay, so because this uh, digastric muscle has got two developmental origin. Okay, so from the uh, different arches. So the anterior belly is supplied by uh, fifth nerve and posterior belly is supplied by seventh nerve. Okay, facial nerve. That is, uh, you have to remember that also because of the uh, development from different arches, right? So uh, you, now you know the boundaries of submandibular triangle. It's very easy. Just remember this picture or um, correlate it with your own submandibular triangle above by the mandible, below by hyoid bone, medially by the anterior belly of digastric and laterally by posterior belly of digastric along with the stylohyoid muscle. Okay, and the floor is ma mainly by mylohyoid. This blue color is a mylohyoid uh, muscle. Along with that, there is very small contribution from geniohyoid muscle. Content, content of this triangle. The main content is a submandibular gland, submandibular salivary gland, along with the submandibular lymph nodes also. And there are some arteries and there are also some 
nerves attached to that. But the main bulk or the main content is by the submandibular salivary gland. Okay, largest salivary gland in the body is the parotid gland and the submandibular gland forms the second largest uh, salivary gland in the body. Okay, it has got a superficial part and a deep part which are divided by the mylohyoid. Okay, so actually um, this gland anterior lobe and the posterior border of this mylohyoid muscle comes and divides that into actually this is if in a cross section the uh, gland will be like this so there will be a big or a larger superficial part and a smaller deeper part which are divided in between by the posterior free border of the mylohyoid muscle okay so uh, it is actually it is like this an anterior uh, superficial lobe and a deep lobe which are divided into two by this mylohyoid muscle okay so that is the main content so in terms of surgical practice the submandibular triangle is best visualized as having four layers and these layers start from the skin and they go progressively deeper so let us see what are there in each layer first layer is a roof of submandibular triangle and it is formed by uh, skin and again the superficial fascia which engloses what are things so the first one is skin then there is uh, superficial fascia and this superficial fascia encloses what all things platysma okay then fat is there and also uh, nerves cutaneous nerves they are the uh, cervical nerves and fascia now, mandibular branch of fascia now. first layer or the roof of the submandibular triangle is formed by the skin superficial fascia containing platysma the subcutaneous fat and the superficial nerves they are the cervical nerve and the mandibular branch of fascia nerve okay and also deep cervical fascia right so this is this forms the first layer or the roof and what about just below the first layer comes the second layer which is otherwise called the submandibular space okay and the main the first thing you see there is the submandibular lymph node in this area and just below the submandibular lymph node comes the submandibular gland but only the superficial portion superficial a lobe of submandibular gland and also there are facial artery and vein which branches submental branches of facial artery and also facial vein submental branch okay and also uh, just over to the mylohyoid you can also see vessels and nerves to mylohyoid muscle layer to layer first you will see the after removing the first layer you will first you will see the submandibular lymph node and just after that you will see the uh, facial vein joining with the anterior branch of retromandibular vein and both coming together and crossing the submandibular triangle superficial to the superior lobe or the superficial lobe of uh, submandibular salivary gland and after that you will be the submandibular gland you will see then you will see the submandibular branches of facial artery and vein and after that, just above the mylohyoid muscle, you can see the vessels and nerves to mylohyoid muscle. Okay, so these are the content of submandibular space of the second layer. And going to the third layer, third layer is actually the floor of submandibular triangle. That I already explained that it, form, it, it is mainly formed by muscles. Okay, so mainly the muscles form, what is this one? Mainly by the mylohyoid muscle and also a small uh, amount of uh, hyoglossus muscle and also middle constrictor and 
a very small part of superior constrictor and also styloglossus. Styloglossus is there, so styloglossus and also a very small part of superior constrictor. So mainly these are the three muscles which forms the third layer or the floor of submandibular triangle. Okay, mylohyoid, hyoglossus and also the middle constrictor with very little contribution from superior uh, constrictor and also styloglossus. So uh, deeper to the third layer or the floor forms the basement or the sublingual space. The fourth layer we can also call it as a basement. Third layer is usually the floor and the second layer we call it as submandibular space. Okay, so uh, roof, submandibular space, floor, sublingual space or the basement, fourth layer, that is the deepest layer and in that from subocial to deep comes the first one, the deeper lobe of submandibular gland, and below the sub, uh, mylohyoid muscle, that is a deeper portion and then the duct to submandibular gland, otherwise called the Watson's duct, then the lingual nerve and uh, then comes the sublingual artery vein and deeper to sublingual artery and vein comes the sublingual salivary gland. Okay. And still deeper, you can see uh, hypoglossal nerve and also submandibular ganglion. So these six structures comes in the fourth layer or the deepest layer or the basement layer or the sublingual space. Okay. So this is also very important, right? So these are the, uh, you know, what is submandibular triangle or the digastric triangle, the boundaries of uh, submandibular triangle, that is the mandible, hyoid bone, the anterior and posterior bellies of digastric and also the posteriorly, along the posterior belly comes the stylohyoid muscle also. And from subocial to deep, the contents are divided into four layers, which are described here. And... Uh, the important clinical uh, conditions which can happen here, one is the most important one for an ENT surgeon is Revix and Jena. And also there can be acute and chronic submandibular sialadenitis, infections of the submandibular lymph node. And also during surgery, the important one is hematoma and also injury to the marginal mandibular nerve which can cause drooling of the saliva or deviation of the angle of mouth. So, all this anatomy should be in mind before you go to uh, dissection or uh, treating the conditions of this submandibular triangle. Okay.